Welcome back to Robin Hood Land, where we'll be finding out who's going to be the hero of Nottingham this weekend in the F2 World Championship final. First up though, let's join those GT30s out on the water. The second support class over the weekend was the GT30s. And this time, we've got some celebrity guest drivers from the T850 class with Mark Williams and David James and Mick Pillow all coming into the GT30 class for this Nottingham Grand Prix. But it was Kevin Hill in 69 who was to show everybody the way around the two-boy course at Nottingham. Some of the drivers have raced here before, but Kevin Hill is one who hasn't. Natalie Craddock in 88, after securing the British Sprint Championship, proves that she is just as good a match for the men, even the more experienced men, such as 22 David James. 97 Ben Morse has a good challenge with Mark Williams in boat number 60. The youngster over the experience of Williams, proving that the young blood of Morse is leading the way there. Kevin Hill makes it look easy, but he too can have moments, but not that time, another perfect turn from Hill. Natalie Craddock working her way up through the field into third position in this case. Two rivals then side by side with Morse and Craddock. Mick Pillow was to have an eventful weekend, proving that the boat was quick in his hands. A great drive from him throughout the week. Check a flag then, and Kevin Hill is to take the Grand Prix of Nottingham for the GT30 class. Well, congratulations. Fantastic Thank weekend you. for you. What was your highlights? Uh, yeah, staying on the water. Yeah. yeah it's uh, <laughs> better than being flying in the, in the sky. But, uh, i tell you what, it was a bumpy one out there. It was a bit rough, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. A bit, bit windy, a bit blurry, but... Uh, I had to lean forward, but uh, <laughs> we got round and didn't get wet, so. Yeah. So what would, uh, just talk us through um, the actual race, the last race that you did there. Uh, well, the last race I did, I had a good start mm -hmm. and uh, led the pack, which was good, out in the cleaner water, but it did get a bit bumpy and a bit rough. Uh, then my motor started to slow down towards the last lap a little bit, but then got going again and refreshed and uh, finished it. The arms got tired, but we managed to stay on the water and not in it. Well, it's been such a dramatic weekend of racing, but this is the moment we've been waiting for. All the boats lined up, ready to battle it out head to head for the UIM Formula 2 World Championship final. The final round then of the UIM Formula 2 World Championships is here at Nottingham as 16 boats line up side by side for this final Grand Prix of 2012 with Eric Stark in pole position from Sweden with the Latvian Uwe Slachter second and Malcolm Goodman third on the grid. It's going to be a big chase up to that first turn. It's a narrow turn, it's quite uh, not a lot of room at the top there. And we ride on board then with Johan Osterberg who started fairly high up on the grid. So we run into the top turn then. Always uh, the most exciting part of the race as we ride on board with Uwe Slacterus. And now with Mick Bisterveld's point of view of this uh, first corner and an accident already. And that's Malcolm Goodman out of the race. He's both then rolling over in the barrel roll situation. And this will surely stop the race and we'll have to go for a restart as Malcolm Goodman's boat then not looking in the very healthy shape there at the moment. So the boat's then returning back. They're going to have to go through a lineup and uh, through it all again. And there you see the replay just to the left of the screen where Malcolm Goodman then just tripping over, I think it was Johan Osterberg. So the drivers lining up the restart then always makes a driver a little bit more tense. And they know that they've got one more shot at getting the first corner right. And away we go. The red lights are on, they're off. And back down the course. They all need to get it right. And Eric Stark then gets a flyer away from the start grid. So Eric Stark then in boat number one. Just look at the speed of his two and a half litre Optimax. He leaves everybody else standing. And uh, already then he's up there in front. And Eric Stark 
is first at the top turn. He's first round the corner, but he almost loses it. Slackdress then is second, and then it's everybody else. On board then with Owen Jelf as we run down the course. And uh, let's see, he's got then Johan Osterberg just to the left of him. And on the right, so Owen Jelf right in the middle of the pack at the moment. And that's really not where I'd expect Jelf to have been in this final Grand Prix. And Eric Stark then is the leader as we now ride on board with Rupert Temper. He's laying in third position then at the moment. And Slacterus, really looking competitive here this weekend, has taken the lead away from Eric Stark. So Stark has made a mistake and Slacterus is through into the lead. Oh, when Stark then begins to squeeze the throttle, but uh, Slacterus runs wide at the top and Stark is once again through. So side by side as they come down towards the pit turn then. And it's Slacterus on the outside and Eric Stark on the inside. But uh, I have to say that Uwe Slacterus has looked fairly comfortable around the pit turn all weekend. And he runs a little bit wide, but uh, he keeps the speed. He doesn't scrub too much speed off the corner. And another tidy turn then from the Latvian. So uh, the two lady drivers then in this race, Milton Buchner's there and uh, Yvonne Koenig running side by side, having their own battle as uh, Nick Bisterfeld now about to pass Owen Jelf. So Bisterfeld from Germany running side by side with the man from the UK, Owen Jelf. And Owen Jelf has raced more laps around this race course than anybody else. But uh, Jelf then not having his best day here at Nottingham. So Uwe Slacterus then still out there in front. He was uh, the man who done the most laps in the free practice earlier on in the day. Oh, and Eric Stark! Eric Stark almost lost it. The boat become airborne and the wind has been a problem here all weekend. And it was blowing up the course, certainly on the uh, previous day. And it still seems to be a bit of a problem for some of the drivers. And Eric Stark was running very, very loose. And we see then from that angle that the boat became airborne. It started to dance around. And really, the driver has to play with the trim buttons. And I think uh, as we ride on board with Eric Stark, you can see how close he was to becoming an aircraft. And there's another problem. And that's Martin Morez, who has uh, had contact with somebody. And uh, well, you can see the boat sinking then. And he was almost lucky not to be collected by another driver. So this will be a yellow flag situation. So all the drivers are all in radio communication with their pit men and they slow the boats down just while we get the other boat out of the way. And here we go on the restart then. And Stark and Slacterus run side by side as they go up to the first turn once again. And Stark, a nice, tidy, clean turn then. They're running down towards the pit turn now and it's Eric Stark on the inside. Uwe Slagdress almost getting squeezed up the bank. But Stark then, clearly now out in front. We ride on board with Rupert Temper. He is in third position. And Eric Stark, Eric Stark has lost it again. And almost collects Rupert Temper in the meantime. And uh, Rupert Temper was lucky then to avoid the Swedish driver, Eric Stark who has now lost a few places, and that's messed his final race of the World Championships up. It's good news, though, for this man, Uwe Slacterus, out in front at the moment. Rupert Temper will be smiling with that second position as we ride on board now with Stark, and he really hooks, but look how close Rupert Temper was to running over the front of him. And a different angle then sees the boat come to a very quick stop and Slacterus's point of view, Slacterus was clever there. He just came out of, uh, out of trouble, out of the action and takes the lead effectively. So a lot of work now for Eric Stark to try and salvage something after that mistake. And he's chasing hard now on the Austrian Rupert Temper as we ride on board now from Stark. And he's really been hanging that boot, boat loose all weekend. So Stark knows that I, He's not going to have enough time in this race now to get up to second position, but it'll give it a good go. But Uwe Slacterus then will be smiling. He's done enough, and he knows that he's got this race in the bag. The final corner, the final straight, and Uwe Slacterus 
wins the final round then of the UIM World Formula 2 Championships. And a good drive from Rupert Temper, who was second, and Eric Stark in third position. So there's confirmation then. Uwe Slatteris, the winner. Rupert Temper, second. Eric Stark in third position. Uvis, you were a man on a mission this weekend. Uh, yes. Oh my word, what an amazing weekend of racing for you. Can you talk us through that race? Uh, I was lucky. Yeah. The first start was miserable. It was bad for me, and uh, but uh, because there was some problem with the lights, and mm. the lights, they didn't work in exactly the, as they should. And uh, actually, because of this man, I got the first position because he was twice in front and then suddenly he didn't want it to be in first. So he let me through. So yeah, I was going, uh, this was a nice race course and I, I, was, I was lucky and uh, I was going fast and I was doing my best and I uh, improved the result. It's, it was a, a very, very hard race for me. My boat is not so stable on the straight down and it was very windy and very difficult. I'm very happy. I'm finished the race, the second place. Yes. Uh, we we finished third, and maybe if we had got like one two laps more, I'm sure we can could be second. And uh, but you know, this is racing. We are world champions, so we didn't want to push too hard because you know the boat. I'm selling the boat, so I don't want to crash it now. And, waiting for my new boat. Then. Good news is that you've done as much hard work as you possibly could for the whole championship, which makes you get gold world champion today. You're going to make your way over to the podium shortly to uh, receive your trophy. Congratulations, you must be absolutely elated. Thank you very much. So the final championship standings for the World Formula 2 UAM Championship. Eric Stark is the world champion. Second position, Johan Osterberg from Sweden, and then Pal Verek Nielsen finishing in third. Well, huge congratulations to both Uvis and Mr. Dynamo himself, Eric, with what turned out to be a gripping finale to the F2 World Championship. Join us next time when we'll be in Stuart B for the RYA British Championship. Champions.